We bless God for a day like this. Coming Sunday will be an Easter Sunday. It started from Good Friday and uh, Resurrection Sunday. We thank God for a moment like this. We give God praise. We give God honor. We worship the name of the Lord for all that he has done. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We started a series from the beginning of this month about spiritual maturity. And today, we'll be wrapping it up because next month is our month of hope. And April 13 is our World Hope Day. And the work that you have been doing in this house, I can confidently tell you that it's been appreciated worldwide. The blessing, the glory, and the joy of the Lord will continue to abide with you all in Jesus' name. We thank God for this commission and we thank God for what God is doing through this commission. The world appreciates you. The world appreciates the good work that is coming out from this place. Amen. Today we want to talk about attaining spiritual sight. Attaining spiritual sight. In other words, attaining the level where you can see. Hallelujah. Attaining the level which you can walk, see. Attaining spiritual sight. How far can you see? How far can you see? Beyond the physical, what else can you see? Beyond what you are looking at with your physical eyes, do you know that you have another eyes called spiritual eyes? If all you can see is something with your physical eyes alone, then there's still a problem. Because there are two eyes God gave to us. One, our physical eyes. Secondly, our spiritual eyes. Amen, somebody. We have uh, two eyes. One, the physical eyes, and the second one, the spiritual eye. In attaining spiritual sight, or to attain spiritual sight is to reach a level in your spiritual growth where you can see what is not feasible to the natural sight. You know, we are talking about maturity. Growing in the Lord. And we said to attain spiritual sight is to reach a level in your spiritual growth. I tell you, your spiritual life is a, it's like a journey. It's a growth. You keep climbing from time to time. To know that you are mature or getting to maturity stage is to be able to reach this level that we call spiritual sight, attaining spiritual sight. 
And to attain spiritual sight, as I said, is to reach a level in your spiritual growth where you can see what is not feasible to the natural sight. That is why I asked a question earlier on that. Beyond what you can see in the physical, what else can you see? How well are you using your spiritual sight? And how far can you see with your spiritual sight? How far and how well can you see? Is it very clear? Is it healthy? Because some people are suffering from what is called spiritual cataracts. Some have spiritual glycoma. They cannot see beyond the physical. Everything looks blur. They couldn't see. And this is very dangerous to growth. If you cannot see far, you cannot go far. It takes those who can see far beyond the physical to go far in life and in pursuit of their dream. Amen, somebody. Seeing the unseen. Seeing the unseen is to attain spiritual sight. You begin to see the unseen. You begin to see what is not feasible to the natural eyes. Everybody cannot see it, but you can see it. You can see that something is not right, even though everything looks right in the physical realm. You can see that the atmosphere has been invested with demons even though everything looks clean and clear. That is when you begin to see the unseen. Somebody look beautiful, look calm and look gentle but you are able to see beyond their physical look and see that no, this is a demon, it's a, it's a wolf in sheepskin. Hallelujah. And that's why many of us have got ourselves into so many problems. By have to enter into relationship with people we should not have any type of relationship with. By buying what I call beautiful nonsense. Well packaged, well presented, but they are demon in sheepskin. Many have entered into partnership with people that they should not enter into partnership because they look perfect in the physical. But they can't see beyond, behind the scene. Hallelujah. It takes a spiritual sight to see what is behind the package. And that is the time you will get to in your Christian life that you will begin to enjoy peaceful life because you will begin to separate the, 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 the shaft from the wheat. From the wheat. Looking beautiful in the physical but rotten in the spiritual. Looking perfect in the physical but behind the scene is something that you should not touch with a long pole. Somebody understanding what I'm talking about? This is the level you will attain that you will know that you have attained some level of growth in your spiritual journey. So if we can all take this thing seriously today, we will begin to avoid some danger. We will begin to avoid some trouble. We will begin to avoid some trap that the enemy has set in motion for us. But because we couldn't see, we just take things on the appearance. Oh, the person is looking nice. Oh, he's got the height. Oh, he has a six pack. Oh, he goes to church. Oh, he's called Peter. His name is John, brother John. His father is a Christian. His mother is a Christian. 
Oh, this one is well brought up. Have you checked what is behind? So you are only seeing with the physical eyes. But you cannot see what is behind the package. You have not been able to attain that level where you can see beyond what somebody is saying. But when you are, your spiritual sight is so clear and it's not encumbered with cataracts or glycoma but can see clearly and pick signal clearly, you will see that even though this thing look good in the physical, beyond the scene is something you should run away from. How many people want to attain this level in their life? Somebody present a beautiful proposal to you and you are able to read the spirits. Bible say, one day they gather to talk to Jesus. And as they were talking to Jesus, they pretended to be righteous. They pretended to be nice. They came with the motive of trapping Jesus with the word of his mouth. And they now appear in Jesus' meeting as a righteous, born again Christian, in quotes. Why Jesus was preaching? Then they asked her, ask him, Master, we know you are a righteous man. You teach the righteous thing. And you are a man that eschew evil. You call a spade a spade. That's why we love you. That is why we follow you. But we have one question for you. Should we pay tithes? Tax. Should we pay tax? Remember they want to trip Jesus. Because Caesar then was a, a, a slave master who drive people. He was a king that drive people so hard. And Jesus perceived, he saw with his spiritual eyes that this question is not an ordinary question. They want to use it to trap him. And he said, can you bring me a coins? And they brought him a coins. And he said, what is on it? He said, the head of a Caesar. And he said to them, give to Caesar what is Caesar." And give to the Lord what is Lord. Because they were expecting him to say, No, you should disobey Caesar. It's only God you should follow. But because he can see their motive. May you begin to see the motive of people around you. May you begin to see the intention of people around you. May you begin to see the motive of people around you. Your enemy that comes like a friend. May you begin to discover and see them from today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Unfriendly friend. They come like a friend. But they are your worst enemy. The Bible said they came so that they may trap a wall. They pretended to be righteous. So that they may trap a wall from Jesus. And the Bible says, and they were amazed at the answer of Jesus. See that they could not get any word out of his mouth, which they will use against him. Your enemy will not get you. The wicked one will not get you. The witches and wizards will not get you. The unfriendly friend will not get you. Those that the enemy has packaged in your life to get you pretending like a Christian, pretending like a righteous person, pretending like a good person, that have come, the wolf that have come in form of sheepskin, that have come into your life. May God open your eyes to see them. 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 May God open your eyes to discover them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is why you must pray to God. To see beyond the natural. It's one of the greatest 
spiritual level you can attain in your life. One of the greatest, last week we talked about being a peacemaker as one of the steps. This final one is ability to see with your spiritual eyes. It's one of the greatest things you can attain in your life. One of the greatest things you can attain in the journey of your Christianity. Amen, somebody. Attaining spiritual sight. Attaining spiritual sight. Let's look at the example of this in the book of Elisha and his junior prophets. What happened to them? Second King chapter 6 verse 8 to 20. Give me second king. Let's all turn our Bible to second king. Hallelujah. Are you there? Give me on the screen second king. They met somebody. Second King chapter 6 Now the king of Aram the Syria was making war against Israel then the king of Israel sent war to the place about which Elisha had warned him so he gathered himself there repeatedly Now the heart of the king of Aram, which is the Syria, was engaged over his thing. He called his servant and said to them, Will you not tell me which of us is helping the king of Israel? Do you understand the story? That the Syria was making war with Israelite. And whenever he said in his line, Tomorrow we are going to lay ambush with them from Jogudu Junction. The prophet of God, Elisha, will call the king and say, do not pass through your junction tomorrow because your enemy are laying ambush there. And it keep happening repeatedly. What did I say? Repeatedly. It keep happening. It keep happening repeatedly to the extent that the king of Syria becomes troubled and say, who is helping the king of Israel? And look at the answer. And one of his servants said, None of us is helping him, my Lord, O king. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tell the king of Israel the word that you are speaking in your bedroom. Can you imagine? He can see it in his house and begin to see what the enemy are planning in the, even in their bedroom. Somebody said, I want that anointing. I want that kind of anointing. He said, he can, he can tell, the, he tell the king of Israel, the word that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, go and see where he is, so that I may send men and seize him. And he was told, he's in Dothan. So he sent horses and chariot and a powerful army there. They came by night and surrounded the city. The servant of the man of God got up early and went out. And behold, there was an army with horses and chariot encircling the city. Elijah's servant said, Oh no, my master, what are we going to do now seeing that there is a great army that has surrounded us? Elisha answered, Do not be afraid. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Look at what happened here. Then Elisha prayed, Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. 
Because the junior prophet under training came out and he saw a mighty army surrounded them. And his master said, he ran to his master and said, what are we going to do? And his master said, go back to bed and sleep. Those who are with us are more than them. And the guy ran out and said, where are they? Those who are with us, where are they? I can't see. Master, are you sure you can see where? Is old age troubling you? It's only me and you, we are here. And you say those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Do you know those who are out there? They are in hundreds, thousands that have come to capture me and you. And prophet Elijah said, I think I know your problem. The problem you have is that you have been with me for so long. But you have not attained spiritual sight. To see that there are other things that eyes, this guy's eyes cannot see. And he prayed to God, Father, please open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw. The Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw. May the Lord open somebody's eyes here today. Who are close. The man of God is saying, Relax. God is in control. But he couldn't relax. Relax because we have mighty army around. Relax because the power of God is working things out for you. Don't be in a rush. Don't be in a haste. I wish to see what I'm doing for you. For I know the thought I think towards you. They are thought of peace. I've not forgotten about your marriage. I've not forgotten about your career. I've not forgotten about your business. I've not forgotten about your case. I've not forgotten about your sacrifice. Working something for you. Oh, how I wish you could see what I am working out for you. The battle better is the end of the matter than the beginning. I'm working something great for you. You may look in the physical that it is over, but I wish your eyes could see what I'm doing concerning your case. I wish you could know where I'm taking you to. I wish you could see what I'm doing. That is why you have to pray to God to open your spiritual eyes. Amen, somebody. Just what do you stand to benefit? What are the significance of attaining spiritual sight? 
Your spiritual eyes has to be open to be able to see certain things beyond the six physical. That's number one. Certain things beyond the physical. See it. God is at work over your case. You can afford to go and sleep. You can afford to be at peace. You can afford to know that he who has promised you is doing something concerning your case. There are certain things you need to see in the spiritual realm. We are not moved by what we see in the physical, but we are moved by what is happening in the spirit realm. But if you cannot see what is happening in the spirit realm, the physical thing will be tossing you to and fro. You will just be running heta scatter, running heta scatter, because you could not see what is happening in the spiritual realm. I pray for you one more time. May the Lord open your eyes to see beyond the physical. Amen, somebody. When your spiritual eyes open, it will help to see what God is doing behind any situation or circumstances. There is nothing so disheartening than the person God has helped to be looking for help again somewhere. There's nothing so disheartening like that, more than that. There's nothing so disheartening that somebody who God has a better plan for your marriage, for you now to see because in the physical you are growing old, you will now take alternative arrangement for yourself. There is nothing so disheartening for someone God wants to give a child like Solomon, a child like David, to not go to the devil and go and buy a satanic child. There is nothing so disheartening more than that. There is nothing so disheartening more than to see somebody that God wants to bless and make a blessing like Abraham to now say, I've been waiting, I'm not seeing anything. Let me go to the devil to give me money. The person now go and get money from the devil destroying the plan of God for he or her life. I watch people on the TV, all those so-called or comfort the witchcraft that say, come, I will make you rich. Come, I will give you money. People go and begin to bow down physically on TV with their eyes open. Make me rich anyhow. Make me rich anyhow. Then they will not tell them, give money to the dwarf. They will not carry their money and give to the dwarf. So yeah, put powder here, bow down. And then they make money for them. Don't you know you are selling your soul? Meanwhile, God has a better plan for them. Meanwhile, God has agenda for them. They've now, because they could not see what God is doing behind their situation, they now ask to surrender to the devil. You will not surrender to the devil. You will not surrender to the devil. No circumstances in the physical that will make you surrender your soul to the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. It gives clearer picture of people, places, and things. When your eyes open, it gives clearer picture. Hallelujah. Better and clearer picture of number one of people. All lizards are lying down on their stomach. But we did not know which one has stomach problem. They will not say because they have stomach problem, they lie with their back. Have you seen lizard lying with his back before? All of them will lie down with their stomach. 
but you will not know which one has stomach problem out of them. All people, kinds of people are coming to your life. But you will not know the one that Satan sent. Because if God wants to bless you, he will always send you people. But if Satan wants to punish you too, he sends you people. So it takes spiritual eyes to see the one that has been sent to your life by Satan. Everybody is looking good. Have pomade. Until you subject everyone through eyes of the spirits. The eyes of the God must see everybody. So when you have encounter with people, you look them in the physical, you are not bad, you are okay. I can do business with you. I can come and visit you. I can come and do that. Don't conclude. After you are finished with physical eyes, subject them to the spiritual eyes. Come and greet me. Oh, this is my card. Oh, let me give you a lift. You see somebody driving Pajero, Land Cruiser, Lamborghini. And the park, they wind down, looking cool, calm, collected. And he says, sister, pop in, let me take you out. You now look at it in the physical. You jump in. Some have jumped into hot water. Some have jumped into hot oil. Some have embarked of joining of no return. Because they get carried away with the physical eyes. But if you check, there was a story of a Sakawa man that was arrested. He used to drive uh, four wheel. Under his four wheel drive, there is a calabash under it, which has put under the seats. The middle leg gives you a lift and you enter. Once you sit there, all your glory, everything about you will drop inside the calabash. When he get down where you want to get down, he give you some money. Please take. God bless you. He's giving you money for your funeral. When the person go, your life will not be the same anymore. The person rather sick, the person rather died, the person rather just there will never amount to something. They are taking your glory. But if you are the type that operates, have attained the level of spiritual height, as the car is coming, the Holy Ghost, you are seeing the car. Everybody is seeing car, but you are seeing a coffin. Everybody is seeing a car, but you are seeing a skeleton. Everybody is seeing a car, but you are seeing some demonic thing around the car. So immediately the person stop you, say, no me, back to sender. Can I give you a list? I prefer walking. <laughs> Please enter. Tell your father to enter, your mother. No, no me. By the time you saw the person, they walk away from you, isn't it? Oh, I'm, the, I'm going on your way. <laughs> oh, you see cemetery <laughs> or oh, mortuary. Which way are you going? I'm going on your way. Enter. You two enter. Which way are they going? To cemetery or where? No, no, no. Somebody should ask me. Which way? People who their eyes are open, they don't fall trap of the enemy. It will give you better, clearer, better picture of the people. Hallelujah, somebody. There are some people you give them gifts. They've seen your gifts. They've seen what is behind your gifts. Hallelujah. They've seen. I told you a story of a young man that ran to me some time ago. And he says, sir, 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 can you help me? I'm going to church in the morning. I want to know the tie, and I don't know how to know it. Can you help me? Then I pick the tie. As I'm about to put it in my neck, I hear the voice. If you tie that tie, you tie your destiny. And I look at the boy, and I saw that he's not an ordinary boy. I took the tie... That I whip his head as if you don't run, I will place fire on you. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Then the boy ran away. I was entrance of the church, oh, just to enter the church. 
you will think everybody in the church are saints. Hallelujah. You think everybody that shake you, that they want. That's why some of you that go to funeral and just shake hand by heart. Everybody shake you in the funeral. Do you know who hands are not, are not, are not pure? Those of you that run from funeral to funeral, funeral to funeral. You must learn to open your eyes. Not physical eyes, but spiritual eyes. Cry to God. Open my eyes concerning these people. Anybody that comes to your life, that's it. Without checking them, whether they are clean. Because you yourself, you are blind. Hallelujah. If you have opened, your eyes has been opened, there are certain people in your life that you shouldn't have been friends with. There are certain people in your life you shouldn't have welcomed. There are certain people in your life you shouldn't have done business with. There are certain people, you see, every pain, every pain, disappointment we have gone through is as a result of doing things with the wrong people. Doing things with the wrong people. That's why when you know man in the physical, you also have to know them in the spiritual. Hallelujah. This is a free counseling to everybody. When you know man in the physical, you have to also know him in the spiritual. Yes, I've seen you in the physical, but who are you in the spiritual realm? It is you that have to subject the person to scrutiny. Hallelujah. Use your microscopic, spiritual microscopic eyes to look at the person. Hallelujah. There are certain people God has warned me about. They will come like a, like a, like a, like a friend, but they are your chronic enemy. There are certain people God has shown me that when they come, I say, have you, have somebody ever come to you that, and you are not comfortable with them? When they come around you, you are not comfortable. Everything is right in the physical, but something, you can't just place your hand in the spirit realm that mm -mm, something is wrong somewhere. Something is wrong with this person. But everything looks good in the physical. When it opens, it gives you a clearer picture of places. Places. It's not everywhere that is clean. It's not every place that is clean. It's not every house that you should leave. I went somewhere. I went to Nigeria some time ago. And a pastor told me, and he said, he suffered in a house for 10 years. He was under bondage. He's a pastor. He said he fasted. He prayed. He nearly becomes a beggar. Every business is doing collapse. Church refused to grow. People refused to bless him. He went inside the house with car. In less than six months, he's trekking. He has owned the rent for how many years? The landlady refused to let him go. Oh, ma, I can't pay the rent. Oh, don't worry, stay. Ah, he doesn't understand why the landlady is not complaining. Oh, ma, this year I can't pay you. Oh, no, 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 my son, enjoy the house. Ah, landlady is nice, so. He said, ah, he's living in, he said, four bedroom house. He said, he got to the extent that he started selling his fridge to eat, selling television to eat. But when the landlady came, he said, mom, damn, I can't pay. He said, oh, my son, I just want to see you. Just be maintaining the house. Ah, God, I thank you. You have given me a good landlady who did not collect money. Say, after 10 years that their life has become backward. One day he invite the man of God to the house. He said, let us pray about this. Something is not right about it. I just feel. He said, immediately they pray. That night, they have all night in the house. And the man of God shouted that you are living in the center of shrine. In the physical, it looks like a house, but this is where all the witches in this area meet. House of a pastor. 
He said, where? He said, come out. He said, they now said, tonight. He said, there was a tree inside the compound. He said, we are cutting down the tree and we are digging the tree. He said, that night before the morning, they, here are the pastor, they cut down the tree. Cut it. What they saw under the tree. Big calabash with a whole lot of things there. Fresh. How did he get there? He said, that is the shrine. He said, it's your blood. Blood of your children and everything they are using to maintain their meeting. You think something is free. They are telling you live free and free. If his eyes has been opened, he will have known what is happening in that place. Some of you, your problem is the place where you are. Some of you, your problem is the place where you are, where you are living. It's not every place you should go without checking it up. So when your spiritual eyes open, he gives you a clearer picture of a place. And lastly, he gives you a clearer picture of a thing. I've been to a house to pray with somebody. Immediately, I entered the house. I saw an image of a nude picture. And the Lord said to me, this is not just the portraits. It's a spirit of fornication. That the lady that I saw inside that portrait will keep on entering into the life of the woman in that house. And they will keep fornicating or committing adultery all their lives. As long as that thing is there. I saw the thing again. It looked like it's moving. A portrait that is on the wall. But any time I look at it, the thing moves. I, I, went back the, the, I went back there another time to visit the person. I now sat in front of the portrait again. I look at it. I saw a movement. I said, maybe it's my eyes. It's a delusion. I went back and I prayed. I went back the third time to visit the person. When I was praying, and I tell the lady, let's pray. We began to pray. We began to pray. And I saw that as we were praying, I'm seeing the portrait shaking. And I told her, how do you get this portrait? She explained to me that somebody gave it to her. And I told her, unless you get rid of it. If you don't get rid of it, your problem had just begun. She confirmed to me that she herself has been suspecting the portrait. But she just thinks that it's a nice art. You see, if your eyes does not open, you will not see a clearer picture of things. There are a lot of people who have received wedding gifts and their problems started from there. Do you know that in some places now they will tell you, don't bring us gifts, give us money. A lady received a wedding gift. Well, wrap wedding gifts only for them to open it and inside the box they saw two images that have been tied together and they packaged them nicely and they presented them. You know when you receive a wedding gift it's not every day you open some of them they have put the box inside their house for three years before they that particular boss say, ah, let us just go and open it. Only to find that husband and wife has been tied together and they put it there. I've been to people's places. I've gone to see things. And the Lord will just open my eyes to see. There's something wrong with this. Especially those of you that buy at work. Always pray on them before you take it home. I met somebody some times ago. They said they used to do a job in Togo. I said, what kind of a job? He said, there is this portrait. A shine, like a statue. Uh, uh, what's it called? Like a statue uh, that they mold. They, they, in a shine. He said... All the white people that come, they are always interested in buying African things, that particular thing. 
He said they normally use it to job people. He said they will carry the thing and they will sell it to them. They will carry it and do what? Sell it to the white people. Then when you carry it away, they'll go and be laughing. See, exactly three days after, that thing will come back to the same spot. They will sell it to another person. Exactly three days after, that thing will come back to them. You see, when you see the thing, it's like it's breathing, but it's a wooden statue. So some of you are in the name of acquiring things. You have a choir problem. Eyes has to open to see that certain gifts, they are not gifts, they are bait to lock your life. I'm not saying you should be afraid of anything and everything. What I'm saying to you is that let God open your eyes to see the clearer picture of that image, of that thing that you are having. Hallelujah, somebody. Number one, it reveals evil package in godliness. When your eyes open, it will reveal evil package in what? In godliness. It looks like this thing is righteous, it's holy. But it's an evil package. Hallelujah. It looks like it is nice. But it's an evil package. When your eyes open, you will be able to see it. Lastly, it helps you to see your true identity. When your eyes open, it will help you to see your world true identity. Who am I? What am I? This thing is for me. This thing is not for me. I am not cut out for this. I am cut out for this. This is my nature. This is not me. So that when people are taking you to work, it's not part of you. You will be able to see immediately that this is not me. But if your eyes is not open, Everybody can dictate anything to you. Do this, you go and do. Do that, you go and do. Go and do this, you go and do it. Go and do that, you go and do that. They dictate for you. They take you to the places that you are not caught for. God said in Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. He said, I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call unto me. And I will show you great and mighty things which you did not know. Call unto me about yourself. Some of you did not know yourself. You need to know your true identity. And the only way is to call unto God. He said, I will show you great and mighty things which you did not know. He said, Father, I want to know what I don't know about myself. Show me what I don't know about myself. Somebody talk to God. Say, please show me what I don't know about myself. Show me what I don't know about myself. Some of you are operating in borrowed character, borrowed behavior, borrowed attitude. Some of you, you are in a wrong place, wrong thing, doing the wrong thing. You are chasing wrong thing. You are with the wrong people. Ask God, show me great things about my life. Show me great things about my life. Show me great things about my life. Show me great things about my life, oh God. I want to know. I want to see my life. I want to see my life. Show me great things about 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 my life. Somebody talk to God. Talk to God. Somebody, I want you to pray the one special prayer. Rise on your feet and pray this prayer. I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Father, please show me what is behind my problem. 
show me what is behind my problem. Every one of us has problems, but we can't see what is behind it. But if your spiritual eyes is open, God will reveal what is behind your problem to you. Show me what is behind my challenges. Show me what is behind my circumstances. Show me what is behind my situation, Lord. Father, open my eyes for me to see what is behind my problem. Show me, Lord, what is behind my problem. Somebody talk to God. Somebody who want to see, talk to God. Somebody who want to come out, talk to God. Let God reveal to you what is behind your situation. Lift up your voice and talk to God. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Hallelujah. Do you know this? There are more things in the spiritual than in the physical. So your spiritual eyes need to be open to understand what is going on in your world and in the heavenlies. There are more things in the spiritual than in the physical. Things are going on in the spiritual more than the physical. I want you to talk to God. I want to see what is happening around me. There are so many things going on in the spiritual realm. In my world and in the heavenlies. What is going on around me, Lord? Open my eyes to see. Because some of you are so blind to what is happening around you. So blind to about what God is doing concerning you. Talk to God. Am I speaking with somebody? Pray to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. In Jesus' name, we are praying. There are many things going on around us that we have no idea of. Things are going on around you. Some of you, we just wake up, you go back to bed, you sleep, you are going back to life as if life is normal. You are not conscious of spiritual things. You are not conscious of your surrounding. You are not conscious of what is happening around you. Because there are many things going on around you. There are many things going on around us. If God should open your eyes to see what is going on in the physical realm. If God should open your eyes to see what is happening around you. You will know that you need to be conscious about it. You need to be conscious about heavenlies. You need to be conscious about the earthly. You need to be conscious about your surroundings. You need to ask an understanding of what is happening around you. What is happening in your family? What is happening in the house you are living? What is happening in your workplace? What is happening in your church? What is happening around you? You need to be conscious about it. I read a story about Dr. E.O. Lukoya. Dr. Lukoya, Daniel Lukoya. The founder of Mountain of Fire Ministry. He said one day he went back to God to say, God, my spiritual eyes must be open." Because he was so much embarrassed. He said, why they were young Christians in the church he used to attend? That they went to church one day and there was a woman standing, sit, uh, sitting by, by, the, by the side. And he used to claim that they were spiritual born again person. Then this old man preacher came. As he was preaching, then he came near him and he said to the woman, how dare you behaving like this in my own meeting? Why are you sitting with your head down and your leg up? And he said, he looked at the woman and he looked at the pastor and said, ah, what's going on? Pastor, this woman is sitting down quietly he said he was expecting the woman to get angry. 
And the woman just said, sorry, sir. I will not do that again. Sorry, sir. I will not do that again. He said, never in your life come to my meeting like this anymore. Ha! Then he looked at the person. He looked at the pastor. He said, how come I can't see? He said, how come I cannot see? That if this woman wants to hurt me now, this is how it will have hurt me, I won't know. I will think I'm sitting with a woman being. No, no, I'm sitting, sitting with a spirit. See, if this woman wants to destroy me, will I just destroy me? See, from that day, he went and prayed to God. Say, Father, open my eyes that I may see. I feel like we should pray that prayer one more time. Somebody here, you need to be conscious of what is happening around you. Say, Father, open my eyes to see in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. The Lord, I want to see. I want to see what is happening around me. I want to see what is happening in the heavenlies. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. Oh Lord, open my eyes. I want to see. I want to see what is happening around me. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. He said another, I read another story again. He said, there is this an elderly man who has been invited for crusade. The old pastor. So when he came to the church and he wanted to read the Bible and he said, one of the elders in the church, the pastors should read. He said, the pastors are like the elders. Uh, the elders. So he said, the elder should read. And one of the elder picked the Bible to read. And he as, as he started reading, the man of God shouted, Stop! And he said, What nonsense is this? Ah, everybody started looking because that pastor, they respected him so much. The one who is reading the Bible. So the senior prophet asked him to stop! What nonsense is this? Everybody in the church was so quiet. What is going on? This invited guest has for church to do. Look at the way he shouted at the elder to stop. And he said, How dare you having a waistband, spiritual waistband on you and you are reading Bible? Ah! The man can see what is behind on the waist of the elder. <laughs> Ada has put on satanic waistband. Big body. Big body alone. Is on the Ada waist. And is the senior Ada in the church. <laughs> and he said, the Ada now says, sorry, sir, I will never do that again. Say, go to the toilet and remove that thing. Go to the toilet and remove that thing. So the other quickly dropped the Bible around to the toilet to remove the alone day. Hallelujah. You have to pray for God to open your eyes. I remember a crusade. During the crusade, as the pastor was preaching, all of a sudden, the choir mistress was ministering. She was under the anointing. Everything was going on. But all of a sudden, the pastor stopped the meeting. And he called the choir, head of the choir out, who was ministering. And he said, if you do what you are planning to do, you will go blind forever. And everybody was wondering that, what is he planning to do? He said, come and see me after the church. But if you go ahead with what you are planning to do, you will be blind forever. After church, they called the pastor and everything and he said, this lady has some tiro, what do you call? The... I, I, I lead. 
the coli, or what do you call that thing that they normally put, the black thing the women put in their eyes? Eyelashes. Eh? Eye pencil. Uh -huh. But it's a spiritual pencil that he has put to draw her eyes. Eye pencil. Eye pencil. Eye spiritual pencil. Not knowing that the lady who was singing beautifully has planned that after church, there was one guy he has started in the church, somebody's husband. The guy is very rich. He said the man has told him that when you are singing, you are singing and you have put that thing on your eyes, you will go and dance around that man. Immediately you winkle your eyes on the man. After church, the man will be following you. Anything you ask, he will give to you. It has become your life, Mugu. So, wife, don't fight your husband quickly that they are following women. You don't know what the woman has put on the eyes that made them follow them. Say, Lord, have mercy. Some men are not behaving just ordinarily. Oh, they are under some spiritual influence of eye pencil. Hallelujah. Eye pencil. That is it. At the early stage of the ministry, we are uh, former place. We are conducting a deliverance, and during the deliverance service, something happened. A lady of eighteen years old said he has slept with ninety men, ninety, ninety, not nine, ninety men, including big men. Very small lady, nineteen years old. Nineteen years, he has slept with ninety. And he said, what happened? He said she has some bead in her waist. So when she slept with the men, during the intercourse, the bead will turn to snake. And it will bite the man. And the man will not know. After that, they transfer something to the man. Said the man life will never be the same anymore. If your eyes did not open and you go and carry Jumbo, <laughs> you are gonna. You are what? Gonna. Some waist bead, a python. I am not saying all beads are python. I'm not saying everybody that use beads. Carry Python. No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Amen, somebody. <laughs> so you begin to tell your wife, that Python you put in your waist, remove it. I didn't say that too. Beats are nice. They are for fashion. Just like Satan can use anything. But if your eyes open, such person is even coming near you, you have already seen that you are not clean. May your eyes be open. Let me quickly close with this. Sit down. Let me close. Danger of being spiritually blinded. What are the dangers of being spiritually blinded? You become a victim of devil devices. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, he said, For we are not, he said, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. But if your eyes is not open, you will become a danger of what? Visual ignorance. There's a lady, at the very point in time, I read a story about a lady. She was the only daughter of a millionaire father. Very good, born again Christian. But her eyes was not open. This lady finished me school, went and did masters. Was looking for somebody to marry. They pray, 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 pray. It looked as if it's delayed. All of a sudden, this guy show up. Six footed. Six pack. 
family. You know, Satan will package beautiful things for you. And this lady started loving this guy. This guy started coming to their church. But the pastor picked this guy and said that this guy is not right. Even though in the physical he looks, he joined the department, he was doing well in the church, but the pastor's eyes is not too clear. The lady's father also picked this guy. But the girl said, I'm madly in love with this guy. Don't marry this guy. He said, this is the guy I will marry. He forced his father, he forced everybody, and they marry. Three months after marriage, this lady started getting sick. Started getting sick. And the funniest thing is that she got married as a virgin. She kept herself. It was this man she met that broke her virginity. Three months after, she was sick. And they treated her malaria, this, that. Now it wasn't going. Only for them to go and do the test. The girl has HIV. How? What happened? Only to discover that the guy is already HIV patient before. He knew that he was an HIV patient. Didn't tell the girl. He knew that if he managed to enter into the family of that girl, they have money. So they will fly them abroad to treat them. He said of him to die with his HIV. The girl family will take care of me. So he planted himself into the life of that girl. He started raising hand. Hallelujah, praise God. I'm a born again. I'm a new creation. It's not every born again that is born again. There are born again that are born again. He planted himself. So that something can happen. And exactly what happened. When the lady discovered that was the early stage of HIV, nobody knows that this drug that can make them live long has not come that time. The lady started crying. She discovered that she was pregnant. Too. She started crying. She started crying. She refused to eat. She did that. He said the boy is a devil. He's going to divorce the girl. But it doesn't take six months. The lady died. Funny enough, the guy did not die. By the time they will sack the boy, he has gathered some money. He just travel abroad. It is the lady who lost. The only child of the parents. Only child. Let me tell you. The Bible say, let Satan should take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. So if your eyes is not open, you will become a victim of satanic devices. Two. You will make multiple mistakes. Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3: A wise man sees an evil coming and avoid it. But a simple one go on and on until he's been a slave with it. If your eyes is not open, you will make multiple mistakes. You keep making the same mistake all the time, all the time, because you can't see. And number three. You will miss the thing that belongs to you. You will miss. You see, sometimes some of the things that are meant for you may not be attractive in the physical. But in the spiritual realm, they, that may be your own package. That may be what will give you joy. That may be what will give you peace. That will be what will take you far in life. But if your eyes are not open, he said, the thing that are concealed is of the law, but the revealed things belong to us. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29. He said, the thing that are revealed are for us. So if your eyes is not open, how will you see what belongs to you? You will just be doing permutation. You will now begin to gamble with your life. Gamble with everything. So you will not know what is meant for you and what is yours. When your spiritual eyes is open, you will see what belongs to you and what is given to you in the Lord. Let's close with this scripture. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 19.
that gives you a deep and personal and intimate insight into the true knowledge of him. For we know the Father through the Son. He said that God may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Say, Father, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Reveal things to me, Lord. Open my eyes to see, Lord. Spirit of wisdom and of revelation. Give me the spirit of wisdom and of revelation. Give me the spirit of wisdom and of revelation, Lord. Father, I need it, O oh Lord. I need the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I need the spirit of wisdom and revelation, Lord. I need the spirit of wisdom and revelation, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name. In verse 18, he said, And I pray that the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, the very center and core of your being is the eyes of your heart. The most important thing in your life is the eyes of your heart. Not the eyes you are seeing physical, but the eyes of your heart. He said that the eyes of your heart, which is the very center and the core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you to the riches of his glory, inheritance in the saints, the God's people. Let the eyes of my heart be open. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Somebody lift up your hand and say, Lord. I want to see. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want to see you. Come on, lift up your eyes. To see you high and lifted I want you to lift up your hand or your spiritual eyes. The eyes of your heart, which is the core and the center of your life. And say, Father, open my spiritual eyes that I may see. I want to see. Remove every cataract, spiritual cataract. Remove every spiritual glycoma. Let me see, oh God. Let me see, oh God, what is meant for me. What is meant for my life. What you have prepared for me. He said, the eyes have not seen, not that the head have heard. Lord, what did God prepare for his people, Lord? But open my spiritual eyes to see your plan for me. Your plan for my life. Your plan concerning my destiny. Show me what to do. Show me how to do it. Reveal things to me, Lord. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name, Lord. 